All right, we're gonna remove and replace the bladder in this accumulator. All of the nitrogen has been bled down. It'll make life a little bit easier for that little bit that you couldn't get out to pull the valve core. Use the same tool that you would use on your car tire. Okay, valve core is removed. Now we'll remove the nut and the warning plate. Now we turn the accumulator around and we're going to remove the backing plate, the O-rings, so that we can uh, pull the bladder out from the rear. Okay, we'll just loose it, so we can move it by hand. Accumulators will differ, but most of them are going to have a metal washer, a rubber O-ring, and a neoprene ring, and then another spacer. When you take these out, keep them in order. It's not a bad idea to take a digital picture so that you can remember how it goes back in. It's very important that, uh, that, that all of these pieces go back on the accumulator exactly the way they, they came off. Now we're going to remove the retainer ring. There's a couple of different types of retainer rings. This particular one has to be removed in the accumulator and it's in two pieces. Some of them fold in half. This one is, has a single piece and it has two flat edges so it can come out. Once it's turned around, it can be pulled through and then the rubber grommet can come in afterwards. Unfortunately, you don't have a lot of room to work with. We got a lot of bladder and a lot of stuff that's got to come out of there, but we don't have a lot of holes. Okay, so there's the metal piece. You see the flat edges. And now we have to get the rubber grommet out. With the metal retainer ring and the rubber grommet out, now we can pull the poppet valve. Okay, with the poppet valve removed, now the bladder can come out of the hole. You might have heard a little bit of nitrogen come out of there when, uh, when we did that. Okay. Now the bladder is removed. Good idea to wipe everything down. Make sure there aren't any rough edges inside there to upset the, the new bladder when it comes in. Most bladders will fail either from not being pre-charged properly so they hit the pocket valve too often or from contaminants that get inside of the accumulator and they rub against the, the rubber bladder and they, they rub all the way through. Okay, now there's a couple of different tools you can make or you can purchase one. Uh, you can purchase a handle that has a, uh, that 
can be screwed into several different lengths. Uh, or you can make your own tool. You see we've got a little string here that we're using a wire and uh, a cap from a car tire. Screw that down on there and then you can put the other end through the hole in the top of the accumulator. Come from the bottom through the top hole. And that will help you to guide the accumulator bladder into that top hole. Any way you cut it, it's not going to be much fun. The bigger the accumulator, the bigger the pain it's going to be to replace that bladder. That's just a fact of life. Nothing you can do about it. Just try to get it right the first time. Because if you have the slightest little crease in here, you're going to be changing another bladder tomorrow. Now we're going to put the warning plate and the nut back on. We're going to leave them on there loosely though. It's not a bad idea actually in the field to, once you have the poppet valve back in, put about 50 PSI of nitrogen in there and then bleed it back off. That will seat better if it's been inflated. Okay. Now we have to assemble the grommet and the retainer ring assembly inside the accumulator. This is easier said than done too. You may be tempted to use a flathead screwdriver when you do this. It's probably not a good idea. Something with a smoother edge like the handle of a, uh, of a crescent wrench, something like that, will probably be less likely to pierce that flat. All right, now it's all assembled. Put your O-rings, your washers back on exactly the way they came off. Remember, all these are different. All right, and then the lock ring. And tighten it down in the field, this would be a real good time to put your 50 PSI in, bleed it back off, and uh, then replace your, uh, your valve core. Remember not to use a low pressure car tire valve core. Use the type that you buy from your hydraulic supplier. Our accumulator is back together and ready to go on the machine.